Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, doing another movie review this week. And this time, part of the Jurassic Park film series, which I did a review on all four of them since 2015. I'm going for the latest uh, follow-up to Jurassic World, simply called Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Which reprise the roles of Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard as Owens and Claire, which we last saw them in Jurassic World, which they were actually very good in the film, because we get to see all the dinosaurs going around, including the blue, which is the, the last living Velociraptor that we ever got. Also friends with Owens. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was a fun movie when I saw it back in 2015. Um, in spite of its issues, um, I still enjoyed it, even to this day. The sequel, on the other hand, has a follow-up to it, um, which is also part of the fifth installment. I would say it's quite decent. It's enjoyable. Not exactly as good as, as Jurassic World, but pretty close. I mean, it's a little better, but I'm not saying it's far, far ahead. You know, I'm just, but I'm just not saying it's far ahead there. But, but still, I mean, this is different compared to the other one. I mean, this time it's about you know, Owens and Claire, you know, teaming up to save all the dinosaurs from a volcanic eruption that's happening in Isla Nublar, in Isla Nublar. And unfortunately they're being taken to the estate of Lockwood. It stars Chris Platt once again, along with Bryce Dallas Howard, Raph Spall, Justice Smith, Daniela Panada, James Cromwell, Toby Jones, Ted Levine, B.D. Wong, Isabella Sermon, Geraldine Chaplin, Peter Jason, and Jeff Goldblum. It's written by Derek Connolly and Colin Trevorrow. Not Trevorrow, yeah, I made a mistake on that one, but yeah, I had trouble with pronouncing names once again. And it's directed by J.A. Bayona, the same director who gave us. A Monster Calls, which I did enjoy too, along with The Orphanage and The Impossible. The movie begins after the events of Jurassic World, which causes major chaos throughout the entire park. A small team of mercenaries had arrived on the abandoned Isla Nublar, the island, to collect DNA from the Endomics Rex at the bottom of the park's lagoon. After successfully collecting a bone fragment, of one of the dinosaurs. The team survivors had barely escaped with only a few members killed by the attacks of the Mosasaurus and the T-Rex. But three years later, a U.S. Senate had a hearing in Washington, D.C. where they debated whenever they should save the dinosaurs from a volcanic eruption in Isla Nublar or if they should be extinct all the way through. And that's when we get to see Dr. Ian Malcolm, the mathematician, which we last saw him in The Lost World Jurassic Park. And it's now growing older now. And he's played by uh, Jeff Goldblum. He testifies that the dinosaurs should be allowed to perish to correct John Hammonds, who of course was played by the late great uh, Richard Ambrell, his mistake on cloning them all. But meanwhile, Claire Deering, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, who's a former operation manager at Jurassic World, had created a dinosaur protection group to save the animals. In fact, she also teams up with uh, two experts, you know, younger experts. One is, is Franklin Webb, played by Justice Smith, who's a former park technician who actually can get the tracking system online and a pale veterinarian named Zia Rodriguez, played by Danella Panelda. So, 
Yeah, they're going to team up. So, after uh, a Senate aid rules against rescuing the dinosaurs, Hammond's former partner, Benjamin Lockwood, played by James Cromwell, had summoned Claire to his Northern California estate. So he, he has an aide who happens to be the villain of this movie named Eli Mills, had revealed a plan to relocate the dinosaurs to a new island sanctuary. But Claire is needed to help by reactivating the park's dinosaur tracking system to locate the animals, including Blue, uh, the last living Velociraptor. So that's when Claire decided to uh, to recruit uh, a former Velociraptor trainer and Blue's Alpha, Owen Grady. Yeah, they're both estranged. I mean, of course, because I know they were married before and then, you know, they weren't working out at this point. And he was just, um, you know, building the, a new house over there. But anyway, they, they team up once again to help capture her. But once they arrive at Isla Nublar, that's... They actually team up along with uh, Franklin Webb and Zia Rodriguez with a mercenary team that's led by Ken Reilly, who's played by Ted Levine, to search for Blue. But unfortunately, things had gone completely wrong because by the time they captured Blue, Really decided to use all the tranquilizers to shoot the dinosaur, but then, you know, one of the mercenaries uh, who got attacked accidentally shot her. So she's beginning to lose blood quickly, but they're trying to find a way to actually uh, give a blood transfusion to the other dinosaur, so they'll give it to Blue, so he'll she'll be able to recover. And that's actually how it happened when when they were trying to take all the dinosaurs away that's loading up into the trucks. But before that actually happened, um, that's where we have the volcano eruption that was going around. Uh, Franklin was trying to track the system, but unfortunately they were trapped inside the facility al along with uh, Claire. They tr they're about to escape from from the a rising lava that was shooting down. Of course, another dinosaur came around, about to attack them. Um, yeah, Owen was being uh, tranquilized as well, but he was suddenly awakened. But he was trying to move where all the lava was starting to come up, and so he was trying to escape along with the dinosaurs around. So both Claire and Franklin were inside that that mach that uh, glass machine, as you may have saw in Jurassic World. So they were stuck in there. They're trying to to move around. They're trying to they're trying to get out of there. But Owen was trying to get inside, but he couldn't. He was trying to get away from all the other dinosaurs. So then, and of course the the volcano. So they escape all the way, and then they want to go, trying to get all the rest of the dinosaurs out of there. They went inside the one of the trucks so they could try to find a way to save them. Yeah. <clears throat> so once um, they were back at the estate, uh, Lockwood orphan. That's where we meet uh, Lockwood's orphan preteen granddaughter, named Maisie. It was uh, played by Isabella Sermon. Um, go over here is what Mills' uh, plan was about to do. And that's where he got an auctioneer named Gunnar Eversall. He was sickly planning to auction all the captured uh, dinosaurs. So at this rate, they were going to sell them all instead of saving them. And that's where they also added a new genetically engineered dinosaur named the Interraptor that was actually created by Dr. Henry Wu played by B.D. Wong by actually using the mix of of the Indominus Rex and the Velociraptor DNA to put them together they also used a tractor gun 
you know, for the Ender Raptor, you know, just kind of like how they did it with the Velociraptor, to track down a victim, so that way the Ender Raptor were actually attacked that one person alone. But of course, Ru wants the blue DNA to create an enhanced Ender Raptor, so but they are aware that Blue's blood is being contaminated. So that's what led to all this that's happening. So it's up to uh, Claire and Owens, along with the rest, to actually save the animals from being sold or anything else that's going on. So. All of all, it's a decent follow-up to Jurassic World. In fact, it's still entertaining. Um, I did enjoy it. I mean, it's great to see Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard uh, once again as Owen and Claire as we last saw them in Jurassic World. And it's great that they team up again to save Blue, the Velociraptor. There's also, um, also you know, Owen's friend. But not only that, though, but you know, we get two experts um, who's working for Claire. Yeah, Franklin Webb and Zia Rodriguez. Yeah, both played by uh, Justin Smith and Danella Hinata. I mean, and both of them were good too. I mean, granted, Franklin was a wimp, but that's understandable. I mean, I know he's afraid, and he had to put some bug spray on him. He doesn't like bugs, but hey, <laughs> that's his production. Um, but of course, you know, he's trying to run away from all these dinosaurs attacking him, so, because, you know, he's afraid of the T-Rex and all that. <laughs> he thought that they were dead. And that's always the case. But Zia, on the other hand, um, she's very smart and intelligent, so she's, she's there to help uh, Blue, you know, trying to take out the bullet out of her because you know, she got shot by one of the mercenaries after they tranquilized her so they had to give her a blood transfusion and so that way she'll be able to have more blood but it's being contaminated so that would save her life uh, there was a bit of a crazy moment you know where Franklin was disguised as a scientist and Henry Wu was telling him what to do yeah, apparently, you know, Franklin wasn't smart, but however, um, he did knock uh, Henry out by injecting them with, with the tranquilizer, and and Zia just uh, handcuffs herself to the cage, you know, where Blue is. Yeah, and Zia was just telling the Henry that that Blue's blood is contaminated, but then. <laughs> At the end, when Franklin just saves Zia's life, she's just like squashing her face, like Ooh! like that. I'm like, what was that about? Really? I don't know. That that was just ridiculous, in my opinion. <laughs> um, of course, it was good to see Ted Levine, even though he's the villain too as uh, Ken Reilly, the mercenary, who's actually working with a complete asshole, Eli Mills, who's played by Raph Spall. Yeah. Yeah, because he's the one that started this mess. But he got what he deserved at the end. <laughs> yeah. When he got attacked by, by two of the dinosaurs. And also... Um, even at the end, too, um, Kim really got what he deserved, you know, when an indoor raptor that he actually tranquilized as it suddenly awakens uh, really quick and just <laughs> attacks uh, and eats uh, really out. So, got what he deserved, too, so on and so forth. Uh, as for the other cast, um, James Cromwell, he was only there for a while, he was actually falling ill, 
but of course uh, Eli actually kills him at the end. It sucks. But of course he's a former partner of of John Hammond. But he was good. I mean, he was he, he was good in the movie. I mean, <clears throat> along with uh, Geraldine Chaplin, who's the housekeeper and the nanny of Maisie. And speaking of Maisie, because I know she lost her parents. Uh, she was very good. Uh, was played by uh, Isabella Sermon. It's great that we have a kid that's not annoying not irritating or anything like that or not boring either you know like some of the kids in, in the other Jurassic Park films like Jurassic Park 3 and even Jurassic World for that matter and, and of course The Lost World Jurassic Park but I think she's right up there with the kids in Jurassic Park so, so I'm glad we, we actually went for that um, <clears throat> Uh, on, on the other hand, though, it was great to see Ian Malcolm again, but unfortunately it was a cameo. So he was only there for the beginning and the last half of the movie. But it, it's great that Jeff Goldblum reprises war. Apparently the idea of this was that, well, he, he was afraid that maybe they might cut him out throughout the entire movie. So you never know if he was going to be in there or not, so... The whole idea of this was that he was just going to be there at the beginning, at the end, just him just testifying what's going on. I'm trying to find a way to save the dinosaurs from being extinct from a, a volcano that's erupting in Isla Nublar. Well, anyway, uh, B.D. Wong once again reprises well as Henry Rue, but <clears throat> you know, he's there you know, trying to get the sample, but he was also chosen to, uh, to actually use the DNA from the Velociraptor and the Indominus Rex so they can create the indoor raptor. But he didn't want to sell it. He didn't want that to happen. But, but Eli just couldn't listen because he's a or at this rate, <laughs> is a buyer. But everyone else said to buy that dinosaur anyway, so. I, I know. Um, <clears throat> I, I love the moments at the, towards the end of the film where they're trying to escape uh, from the Lockwood uh, estate. They're trying to get all the dinosaurs out of there so they can find a way to be safe. And they sure did. <laughs> uh, I, I love the moment where the indoor raptor was about to go all the way on top of the Lockwood estate. It went straight into Macy's bedroom, just ready to attack her until you know, Owen had came to the rescue to save her and trying to shoot the indoor raptor. And of course, Blue came to the rescue as well. <laughs> so they went all the way on top of the roof. Yeah, Owen had to held on with uh, Maisie, but then Claire came because she was actually attacked. And but luckily she was she survived. So she was ready to shoot down the indoor raptor, but. Blue came and jumped into it and and actually kills uh, the indoor raptor by going straight into the the dinosaur statue. Which I think that was uh, one of the Triceratops, I think. That was a great moment right there. And there were several others too. Um, but the movie does have its problems with the screenplay. I can understand that. I mean, I wish the screenplay was written better. But what can you do? Uh, but it definitely has some great special effects. Um, yeah, of course, all CGI. I mean, for its budget of 170 to 187 million dollars, it's already becoming um, 
the highest grossing film ever. It made over one billion dollars so far. I can't believe it. So it's doing so well, and I'm glad it did. So, so they're going to probably get ready for another follow-up coming up. So that's going to be part of the trilogy of Jurassic World. So I can't wait for that. To see what their next adventure is going to be. I mean, maybe we might be able to get um, Alan Grant again. I mean, you never know. I'd love to see Ellie again, too. Since we got Ian Malcolm. Whatever. Who knows? But all of all, um, I enjoyed it. It's fun. So anyway, I give Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom three and a half stars. I'm Josephine Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.